Hi, everyone. Thanks so much and welcome back. It's always lovely uh, to connect with you. I want to get into uh, something of an interesting topic. I feel uh, when relationships go too far or letting relationships go too far, I think most of us have had, even if it's a little bit of experience in this area, uh, we can talk about the um, trials and tribulations and the turbulent waters you can let yourself in for if a relationship just flat out goes too far. And I'm going to cover um, all types of relationships I want to refer to here, personal, family, business, work, what have you. Uh, recently, I was sitting with a man um, in his mid-40s, lovely, lovely person. Uh, life is somewhat in shambles now. Um, he was just exiting a divorce and signed up for some classes, just innocently signed up for some classes at the gym. Um, and the woman who was uh, teaching this uh, Zumba class, um, you know, they struck up a just friendly conversation. And, you know, one thing led to another, uh, grabbed a bite to eat. And, you know, th there we have it. And he, as he shared with me, you know, I remember specifically telling her that I'm, I'm fresh out of a divorce, you know, a bite to eat once in a while, a cup of coffee is fine, but I've, I'm really not up for more than that. And she smiled and seemed to be agreeable to that. And uh, wouldn't, you know, a couple months uh, into just what was very casual, casual conversation, she started to push it, uh, kind of pushing the limits and the boundaries. She wanted more. He was very leery of it. Um, but he stopped paying attention. He just went with her momentum. And long story short, uh, a year later, now mind you, he was already coming out of divorce. A year later, uh, this woman has just flipped his life upside down. I'm not going to get into all the particulars, but you know, when, when you have a close encounter with someone who, you know, you, you've already explained things to and they push it. That's a tall tale sign right there uh, that you need to go on your merry way. Uh, but he did not do that. And some mental health issues surfaced with her that really just gave him a run for his money when he tried to cut all contact and all ties. And, you know, he was just beside himself. And I, I can just 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 vividly I, I keep hearing him say, you know, Sheila, it was supposed to be nothing other than an instructor in a Zumba class. That is exactly where it should have stayed. I don't even know how this happened. I mean, can you imagine uh, being in the middle of a corporate meeting and having someone very inappropriately barge in? very inappropriately embarrass you in front of your colleagues. This is the kind of behaviors that he had to deal with. And it just shook him to the core on top of the mess of getting out of his divorce. So again, folks, instincts and intuition will give you counsel. But the thing is, you have to listen to those instincts and intuition, you know, and the discernment discernment, I feel, comes from exquisitely, comes from our highest selves uh, through the Holy Spirit. And when it is bypassed, when it is bypassed, we almost always open a door that will lead to regret. And I had mentioned this is not just for uh, personal relationships. We're talking business, uh, work, what have you. Uh, another story I can share with you, woman, got herself uh, involved with a man relationship for 20 years. This man very married, you know, through, through their whole relationship is very married. Uh, she ended up having uh, two children with him. These are children uh, outside of his marriage. And all these years later, he promptly announces, yes, I finally divorced my wife. She feels like, Hey, you know, this is my chance, my opportunity only for him to state, nope, there's someone else that I'm going to be moving on with. I'm serious about her. I'm going to marry her. And what that was a slap in the face 
heard around the world. And the thing of it is, this gentleman, as she recounts the story, Sheila, I was taking some college classes um, just for some additional certifications and credits. And we ended up in the same study group. And that was it. It should have been nothing other than a friend that I met in a study group. And I knew that. I knew that when it was happening. And I just, one thing led to another. And here I am. And it's really a shambles. And it's really a mess. So why does that happen? Why do we, why do we allow that to happen? Sometimes it's loneliness. Sometimes it's boredom. Sometimes it's just sitting back and hoping and wishing that something is what it clearly is not. And other times it can be fear. You know, I think about my life's journey and I've shared with you guys some details of uh, two relationships that I had that really ended uh, badly. It was deeply hurtful. And one was a gentleman I had dated for a uh, few years. And the other one was someone I thought was a friend ended up being quite the opposite. And I can recall doing that emotional autopsy, if you will, after the dust settled. And I promise you, I promise you that well before, long before things went bad, there were chest flags and, and signs and the whole nine yards. Sheila, this can only go so far. Don't cross that border. Don't cross that boundary line. And I have to tell you, when you don't listen to your highest wisdom, when you don't do that, you are volunteering for the harsh lesson that will follow. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. And in my case, I certainly take full responsibility. I volunteered for the very harsh lessons that follow. I refuse to be a victim for anyone. And I can say the same uh, for everyone. Eight times out of 10, eight times out of 10, when you don't uh, respect that boundary line, that natural boundary of discernment, you're going to open the door for a lesson. And sometimes they're very expensive lessons in terms of your the, how much time it takes to clean them up and just the emotional fallout that you're going to need to heal from. My feeling is that life and how we live it and the results that we get are based on truth and intention, truth and intention. And the truth is there are varying levels of energy that we have to deal with out here coming from others. There are mul multiple layers of intentions that, you know, you can't always see someone's intentions. They don't always announce um, their intentions. And this is why discernment, borderlines, and boundaries must be respected. And the truth of the matter is, if a relationship goes too far, that was never naturally or in common sense terms intended to, if it goes too far, the place that it may go, um, we take for granted that everything ends up in a nice, neat, tidy bow. Life doesn't always uh, work like that for everyone. And depending on the, where those relationships take you, uh, you could really be stuck on your knees cleaning up the uh, floor from that mess for a very long time, you know, and people worry about, you know, but I want, I want to be kind. I want to be a kind person. This has nothing to do with being kind. In most instances, you can be as, as kind as a sugar drop, as kind as you want to. This goes back to honoring your journey, honoring your path, and honoring your wisdom, Everyone that we meet cannot go with us in an intimate way on our journey. There wouldn't be enough time. It would be total chaos. That's why there are degrees. You know, we enjoy um, people in degrees in terms of our relationship. Everyone is not considered uh, an intimate, close friend. You know, everyone is not off on a remote, distant island either. There are many varying degrees in between. And when your highest self, when that inner wisdom, when the divine is speaking to you, well, this shouldn't go too far. It'd be a beautiful idea to take note, honor that, be okay with that. 
be okay with that and listen. Thank you so much. This has been Inspirational Shorts with Sheila. I look forward to connecting with you soon.